slow down in China's growth, what does it mean for stocks? We're not talking about, you know, 10% GDP growth anymore, Kim, but 9, 8%, still legitimate. Yes, I think that uh, China in the second half anyway uh -huh. will slow down a little bit from yeah. about 10 to about maybe 8.5 to 9%, yes. Okay, eight and a half to nine percent. But do you still have confidence in investing in China, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There's still a lot of growth stocks there. It's only a matter matter of uh, really, you know, picking which ones uh, in in uh, the, uh, the whole universe. There's still a lot of stocks in China to to invest in. Now you manage about forty three billion dollars uh, globally, right? At least yes. uh, part of the bearing asset management. You hit a multi asset there. But you know, recently in recent times, because of the volatility that we're seeing in markets, people are looking more towards China. China. Mm -hmm. in, as a valuation play, people are saying it's cheap. That is correct. Um, well, in Asia, now Korea and China are the ch two cheapest markets uh, currently. Right. And, but Korea is flying, but China is not because the tightening in China is much more ferocious than, let's say, in the case of Korea. Uh -huh. So that's why we have a lead. We have a cap on the Chinese stock market. But we believe that once the PBOC declares that it has reached neutrality, whatever that, that could mean, mm -hmm. then I think that the market will have a very strong bounce. Okay, when, when do you think we'll get there to this neutral stance? I think that uh, investors will come back to China uh -huh. perhaps uh, in the third to fourth quarter, maybe the end of the third maybe, or the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so, uh, so still a few months away then? Yes, yes, I'm afraid so. Okay, yes. so how are you positioning yourself in the meantime? In the meantime, we are looking for stocks which uh, can actually continue to surprise the market with uh, earnings surprise yeah. and which are not going to be too subject to policy tightening. Uh, like, you know, property stocks are cheap, but uh, I think that one can take a little bit of time to uh, go back into property stocks. Or let's say banks are also cheap, mm -hmm. but one can take a little bit of time again. Okay. Uh, so in the, in the short term, we're looking at more consumer-related, healthcare-related type of stocks. Oh, healthcare-related. Maybe technology stocks, Lenovo, outperforming, uh, yes, which is pretty yes. surprising. Quite true. Yeah, well, okay, but what about the market action itself? Because, you know, we're basically seeing stocks right now going like this, if not down, in the U.S. I think we've seen four straight weeks of decline yes, at true. this point. Maybe people are selling in May, going away, taking some money off the table. Uh, what kind of trading action do you think we'll expect to see in the next three months? Uh, next few months, I think that uh, in the short term, I mean, there is the end of QE2, yeah. which is about to take place. And so that's why I think that we are seeing a little bit of profit taking ahead of that. So it's possible that by the end of June or the start of July, in fact, the reverse situation may take place. Instead of people afraid of the end of QE2, maybe the, the long positions will be reestablished in the month of May. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, in the month of July, right. I mean, yeah. Okay. So people are selling now, but going back into the market maybe in July. Okay, yeah. but what about the uh, economic numbers that we're getting out of the U.S., still the biggest market in the world, mm -hmm. but, you know, GDP numbers at 1.8% yes, or something yes. like that, coming in way below economists' estimates. You have jobless claims on the rise. I mean, how healthy is the U.S. economy? Um, well, it's not booming, yeah. but it's recovering. Is it yeah. still recovering? Yeah, it's still, it's I think still the Fed talk about 3.5% growth, the GDP <laughs> growth, or like half that rate right now. They, they would like to see that, but I, I don't think that anyone is predicting 3.5. I think most are predicting somewhere between 2.5 to 3. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, for a deleveraged economy, I think that is okay. So uh, I think that 2.5 to 3% is, is fine. I don't think it's a big issue. Okay, so what about the big issue in the Eurozone? Is that making you a little nervous uh, these days? That is difficult because it involves a lot of politics uh -huh. and uh, you know you have the German against the ECB and uh, you know you have the Greeks who have tightened a little bit but not to not as We're much talking about default I mean default is <laughs> a strong word yeah, default is a strong word I think I think I think that restructuring the debt uh -huh. would be a better word to use I think there will be some restructuring done done definitely so you know some haircut will have to be to, to be taken mm -hmm. for those who invest in Greek bonds definitely yes. all right